um, I kind of just need to sit down and talk right now and I feel like I've talked out as well at the same time. If it looks like I've just rolled out of bed it's because I've not even left my bed yet so there's that. <clears throat> but um, today is the 1st of April, April Fool's Day, but this is not an April Fool's joke. Um, it's been about six days since I last uploaded anything at the point of filming this. I'm not sure if I'll upload this or if I'll keep it for the actual vlog. But I have spent the last few days in what I call a prolonged panic attack or a pro prolonged anxiety attack. Take your pick. Um, I'm constantly clammy, sweating, I feel nauseous and I feel really panicky is the best way to put it. And I feel like this because I have the dentist on Tuesday the 4th. Um, I'm, I'm going to be 31 years old on April, in a week's time. In six days time I'm going to be 31. And on the 4th of April I'm meant to be getting... Uh, I'm meant to be getting imprints done, like moulds cast taken off my mouth, because I'm going to be getting partial dentures. Um, if you watch my channel, you know that I have really bad teeth. This is caused by a mixture of um, mental health, past alcohol addiction, medications, and my conditions and genetics. So I've got like five things sort of playing around in my mouth right now. My cat's in his litter tree. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, so you, you're getting like slight glimpses of my teeth as I talk. And this is all I really let people see and I'm really ashamed and embarrassed of people seeing this. But part of this channel is going to be getting dentures and or well, getting a partial denture and whatever else they're gonna have to do to my teeth. Um, I'm really nervous. I'm really scared. Like I'm petrified. So um, at this dentist appointment on the 4th I will not I probably won't be doing the imprints um, because I have two teeth here that are broken in a way that causes when I bite down and then I release it creates a suction. If I bite down on something it creates a suction and it feels like the nerve is being pulled and it creates this pain all up here and down into my neck and down into my jaw and like all around here as well. I also have a bit of a, I don't know how bad it is, but I have a bit of an infection. I have an infection here as well because of these two teeth. So I can't do the imprints. I can't do the molds because if I bite into that stuff, it's going to hurt going up and biting down but then when I take it when they take it out it's going to create that suction and yes sometimes I am scared when I bite things that my tooth my teeth will just like come out with it because I actually broke these two by biting on a sandwich it wasn't a seeded bread it was just like a regular white bread and I'm pretty sure it was just a PB and J um it was something like a PB and J anyway. It really wasn't like a like a sandwich sandwich. It was just like a little throw together thing, and I broke those two teeth. One was just a filling that broke, and the other was the actual 
tooth that broke. So I'm getting, I'm going to ask them to take those two teeth out before we get the imprints done. But the problem with that is they won't be able to do them right after because I'll be swollen and bleeding. And what they wanted to do was they wanted to take the imprints and then when I came back, they'd have the denture ready for me so that as soon as those teeth came out, I'm with the denture and I wouldn't be missing any teeth. And it helps with healing and stuff as well. And it helps like support the jaw and all those different kind of good things that dentures do. Um, I also need to get two wisdom teeth out. I need to get this bottom one out because it's impacted. All my wisdom teeth grew and impacted. This one straightened out, this one straightened out, and this one straightened out. But this one didn't. This one got trapped halfway in my gum and it started rotting and breaking off under my gum. Um, so what they're going to have to do is they're going to have to take that one out by cutting it down and taking it out bit by bit. I know this because I've watched several impacted wisdom teeth extractions. Um, and then they're going to have to take this one out so that it doesn't bite down into my gum. Um, I'm freaking out about, I've had a dental plate before, this dental plate, I got a gat here, I got a gat here, sorry for showing you my teeth, they're gross, but they are what they are, and this is the reality, so it is what it is. So my dental plate was a partial denture with two teeth here and here. And it was fine, but I was also single at the time. And you're probably like, well, you were single then and your teeth were better and you had a dental plate, but now you're with somebody and your teeth are like this. How is this any better than having a dental plate? Well, first off, it was two side teeth, so you don't really see them. And these teeth were in much better condition at the time. Um, this time, it's going to be these two front teeth. It's going to be a few days before my 31st birthday, so I'm going to have no teeth for my birthday. I don't know if I'm going to be able to talk. I don't know what it's going to look like. I know anything is better than what I've got now, except for worse than what I've got now. But at the same time, it feels very psychological for me because I'm so used to looking at this. I'm so used to seeing this and as much as I hate it, I'm scared of going without. Um, I'm nervous about intimate things, which I don't really talk about. I have a lot of issues when it comes to things like that. But having a dental plate, kissing, other things are going to be different. And that makes me nervous. That makes me uncomfortable. And that's also messing with me psychologically. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what they're going to do with these front teeth that are like, uh, they've got cavities up here along my gut, along my gum lines and the staining is really deep and you can see the dentin through them. And I'm missing like half the enamel from the top of my teeth. So like from halfway down my teeth, it's enamel and then up towards my gum line, it's dentin. <clears throat> the brown stuff. Um, I'm not sure how they're going to fix them. They did promise me a smile that I can be proud of. But whitening isn't covered on the NHS. And things like veneers and crowns and stuff like that, they're only on the NHS for clinical reasons. And I don't know if this counts as clinical. So I'm really scared that they're going to colour match my partial denture to my current teeth. 
and then leave me with this shade of teeth. Like, yes, they'd be func more functional and they'd be healthier because it would have been treated. But I'm still scared of being left with brown teeth. I say as I smoke a cigarette. Another thing I'm worried about is my face sagging. So you can see on this side, this side of my face is a lot fuller than this side because I can't chew on this side so the muscle on this side is more built up. Making my face asymmetrical. And I'm a little bit self-conscious about it, not too much. It's not really a big deal. I know why it's like that. <clears throat> but when you get teeth taken out, your jaw starts to shrink you lose bone and your face starts to fall and that's why you see people who have got like full dentures their lips kind of turn down like this and all kind of sags and you know you see the stereotypical kind of image of old people with like the face like kind of mm, crumpled up face and it's all kind of I can't do it because I have teeth in my mouth as bad as they are they're still in my mouth <sighs> um so that's a big thing for me. I'm really scared that they'll colour match to my current teeth and they'll leave me with discoloured teeth. Um, I'm trying to hold on to their promise of a smile I could be proud of. But um, it's really scary. And I find it hard to have faith in things that I can't see. And being a Christian, you'd think that would be easy for me, but it's not, especially when it comes to this kind of stuff. I am so ready to not have these teeth. I'm so ready to not be in oral pain constantly to the point that I don't even notice it all the time because you get so used to having a sore mouth that... It just becomes a slight annoyance in the background. I do plan on stopping smoking, especially once my teeth are finished, especially if they are like a healthier colour. I wouldn't be smoking. Um, I just stress smoke. That's the only time I really smoke cigarettes is when I stress smoke and I don't smoke joints anymore, so. But I'm really nervous about this whole thing. It's got me feeling like I'm going to vomit already and I'm not even in the dentist chair. I know I'll be sedated because when I go to the dentist they give me two different types of numbing injections like first they put on the the topical gel to numb the to like topically numb you so you don't feel the needle as much then I get two different kinds of injections because I have EDS and my dentist who is a sedation dentist and who is a lovely woman and her dental assistant is also lovely um She's got several EDS patients, so she knows from like trial and error and whatever else she's done that two different types of injections works better for people like me who've got EDS. I've got the hypermobility type of EDS. Um, so when I told her that, she was like, and I was like, numbing agents don't really work on me properly. Um, I often have to have like the max amount that they can give me and I can still feel what's going on and it's still really difficult for me so she's like don't worry about it I'll give you two different types of injections you'll be fine and for the fillings I have been fine I've had the gas in air I've had the two injections and it's been I've been nervous but it's been okay they've been really really good but when it comes to having teeth pulled out I find that really difficult so my first uh I have so much den anxiety around dentists because my first dentist... Okay, so <laughs> my dog came back from her walk and she'd rolled in a disemboweled crow. 
so she needed to have a shower and be dried off and she's really hard to dry off so I'm back now so um my first dentist um I think I was about six years old and he just used the topical numbing gel to give me fillings and that was my first ever dental experience um, my next dentist experience was a good few years later and he used those old-fashioned reusable uh, syringes and they look like these big medieval things like these big these big things these big metal plungers and metal things to put your fingers through and they weren't at all modern to say the least um, I don't know why he chose to use these things. I don't know if it was like a cost thing or if it was just him trying to be quirky or I have no idea. But he numbs me up down here. I had an abscess and he pulls out. So he numbs me up properly. Well, as properly as could be. And he pulls the tooth and it fractured my jawbone and left me with a spur, like a little bit of bone sticking up. And he insisted that that would heal itself and that I'd be fine. After a while I was fine, but I was really traumatised. My third dentist um, was a sedation dentist. And they were able to do a lot of work on my teeth and get my teeth fixed for my, like, so they looked like my age and all that stuff. Um, but then I outgrew like I got too old to be able to go to the sedation dentist because it was a child sedation dentist and I uh, I think they max out at about the age of 12 and then you start going to like an adult if you need sedation then you've got to go to like an adult one I think at least that's how it was back then and I liked that dentist that dentist was great I always had a laugh I got to choose what scent of gas and air mask went on and it was a good he was a good dentist then after that I didn't go back to the dentist for a while because my teeth looked fine but then as I got older more and more things started happening to my teeth and when I was about 18 no sorry I'd have been 19 because I had my eldest child at the time I'd had enough so I went looking for a sedation clinic and I couldn't find one the only dentist I could find it would take me for my postcode and stuff, uh, didn't do sedation. I went to that dentist and that dentist groomed me and took my phone number and other stuff went on. He was good at teeth, I'll give him that. He managed to fix my teeth, he even managed to close the gap that I always had between my teeth. He did that as a birthday present for me, which I should have taken as a warning sign that he was a creep. Because what dentist does birthday presents? Um, so I stopped going to him. My teeth got bad again. And I eventually moved house and I found a new dentist. I went to this new dentist and at first they were really nice and they're like whatever and then when she actually like did the pre-exam and stuff to see what I needed done she shamed me for my teeth she made me feel like absolute shit she wouldn't hear me about family history family dental history she wouldn't hear me about conditions that I had she wouldn't hear me about anything and at the time I didn't know about two of the conditions that I have and I thought my teeth thing was all down to like hereditary and a little bit of alcohol. I thought that was a problem with my teeth. But she went on this whole big thing implying that I was basically a drug addict. Because somebody at that age shouldn't have teeth like that. Um, I kept going to her because it was my only option. And things were okay-ish but whenever she'd do a filling it would fall out within a few days she'd put another one in it would fall out within a few days she'd put another one in it'd last a while and then it'd fall out um she redid a lot of work that I had done at the pervy dentist um but then while I was heavily pregnant with my with my second child sorry no my third child um, I was getting these two side teeth removed 
the ones that I had a dental plate for. And I was heavily pregnant at the time. She lies me back in a chair, numbs me up. It doesn't numb enough, so she gives me more numbing stuff. Not quite numb enough, but whatever. And then she starts work. And I had a root canal in that tooth. And they'd put like rod things or something up so that it like st stabilised the tooth better. And it caused it to fuse into my upper jaw. I think that's what it's called, an upper jaw. I'm not entirely sure. But whatever, we'll call it the upper jaw. So it fused. So she had to cut this triangle out from about, hang on. From about here. Yeah, from here. And it goes like this. Down into the empty space. And it still itches to this day and it still bothers me to this day. So she's like basically halfway through and she goes, Oh, I'm sorry. I really should have called the ambulance to take you to the hospital. I shouldn't be doing this. But I'm going to have to stitch you up now anyway. And then after she stitched me up, she explained what had happened. And while she was pulling that tooth out and cutting away the jaw, I felt like I was about to go into labour. I had like contractions starting. I felt really nauseous, just like kind of things that I felt when I went into labour with my eldest child. Um, and I was scared that I was going to go into labour there because of like the stress of having my teeth pulled. But I didn't. I was fine. Um... On the way home, something traumatic happened that I'll talk about another time. It's nothing to do with dentists or anything. It was just something that happened when I was on my way home. Um, and then they took the other side out the next dentist appointment. And that one went a lot smoother than this one. But I could never get over what happened with this. This really messed up my head. So I decided I wasn't going to go back because I was traumatised and then I had a baby and then I didn't have time and then I got ill, I got sicker and I got sicker and I got sicker and I wasn't able to get to the dentist and it was just this whole thing and then there was Covid and I couldn't get to the dentist during Covid because nobody was taking anybody unless it was an emergency and even then they were like, mm, kind of like, are we really going to take this person? Is it really, really an emergency? Because Covid was Covid. Lockdown was lockdown. Um... So after COVID, I had my mum call up my dentist and ask if they'd do sedation for me. My dentist started doing sedation a few years after I joined that clinic and around the time that they took this one out. I asked for sedation and she said no, because you've done it so well without sedation so far. And I just, I just noped out. I was like, no, I'm done with her. I can't. So my dentist referred me to a hospital that has a dental department, which does sedation for adults and children, I believe. And that's where I went. They did like this scan thing that goes round your head. You've got to sit really still and it goes like circles around your face and it takes like this kind of scan of your of your, like your mouth and you can't really see the front bits because you've got like a little plate thing in your mouth. So they kind of got to do a little bit of guesswork around the front area of your teeth as to what's going on. Um, I got that done. They looked at my mouth. They showed me the pictures of my scan. Um... They told me what needed done and I was like, okay, cool, fine. And then I had my first dentist appointment, which I took you guys to as much as I could because I wasn't allowed to film. And Jordan took me. Um, that went fine. I was really, really nervous, but it went fine. It was just a filling and it went, it went fine. I had gas and air. I had the two injections. I had the topical gel. It was fine. Second appointment was while I was in hospital and I took you guys along for a little bit of that too. Obviously I couldn't film the procedure because you're not allowed to film in NHS situations. Um, I don't know how staff and other patients get away with it, why they're allowed to do it, but I was told no, so it was a no. Um, I got 
I think it was a lower filling done. And then she said, next time we'll do the imprints. Sorry, I got a text there. Um, she said, next time we'll do, we'll take the, imp the imprints of your mouth so that we can make the denture. And then when you come back to have your teeth removed, we can just pop the denture right in there and you won't be missing any teeth. What I forgot about, because I always eat on this side, was that these two teeth cause suction. And I only remembered that recently. Because I bit into something and I accidentally used the front of my mouth and said, like, I was trying, I was aiming for the side, but I took a bit of, too big of a bite. And I touched these two teeth. It went up. Ouch. Pulled it back down. Ouch. Really big ouch. Major ouch. Worst ouch. Um, so I'm going to have to have those two teeth removed before they can do anything. Meaning I'll spend my 31st birthday and for God knows long how after that with two of my front teeth missing. And I'm really... Like, I'm not even 31 yet, and just because my teeth are ugly and I'm not the best looking person doesn't mean I'm not self-conscious and insecure. Um, so I'm really nervous about that. Um, I'm nervous about how long I'm going to go without these teeth. I'm nervous about how these teeth are going to look. I'm nervous about how these teeth are going to feel. I'm nervous about what they're going to do with my front teeth. Are they going to crown them? Are they going to, what are they going to do to them? Because you can see the dentin, there's no whitening this. And even if there is whitening this, they don't do whitening on the NHS. And I can't afford whitening. So I don't know what's going to happen. And I'm really scared. So yeah, that's where we are. And on April the 4th, we'll be going to get those teeth out. And I'm fucking petrified. I don't know what to do with myself. I'm constantly sweating. I feel like I'm going to vomit. I just, I don't feel good at all. And I'm worried that, I, I feel like I'm gonna vomit and then pass out. That's how I feel like just since yesterday and I'm not even there yet. Um, but yeah, <sighs> this is quite hard to talk about. I thought I'd actually cry by now. I thought I'd have cried, but I haven't. I've done pretty well. I was crying over it yesterday, which is why I didn't film this. Because I was going to film this yesterday. But I was really upset. I sent voice messages to my fiancé and my best friend. And I cried at them. I ugly cried at them. Um, they both tried to reassure me. And Jordan said that he'd come with me to all the appointments. Um... That he'd be there, they'd support me through it. But I'm still really anxious and nervous, and right now I'm sweating a lot. Jordan's tried reassuring me that it won't change how he feels about me, and it won't change anything, he'll still love me, he'll still want to kiss me, and all those things. And my friend was trying to reassure me that, you know, they're not going to leave you with teeth like that. They're going to, they'll make them look nice. They'll make them white. Like, I don't want like a Hollywood white smile or even a bleach white smile. I just want like a naturally white smile because I'm not really like the hair and the makeup and stuff. Like on occasion, yes, I am, but I'm more like laid back and chill. So I don't need the big bleach white teeth like I don't need the TikTok filter teeth I don't need that I don't want that I just want something that looks healthy and clean and like naturally bright and I'm really scared that they won't do that for me because it's the NHS um I'm also scared that my denture is gonna have metal like hooks on it to clip onto other teeth because that's something that happens a lot with partial dentures is they'll put like little metal clamps that just sort of like clip onto the surrounding teeth to hold it in place. I hate the feel of metal against my teeth. I hate it with a passion. Forks, spoons, dental equipment, 
you name it. I hate when metal touches my teeth. I hate it with a passion. It feels horrible. It makes me feel like I've got this shock through my body. Just no. Um, I'm scared they won't look right. I'm scared they won't fit right. I'm scared it's going to cause issues with my gums. I'm scared that... <sighs> I'm scared of bone loss and losing, like having my face sag. I'm scared of a lot of things. I'm scared of dry socket. I've never had dry socket, but I've had hellish toothaches and I've had abscesses and dry socket is not something I want to play around with. I'm absolutely terrified of getting dry socket. Dry socket is when like the blood clot comes out and the bone's left exposed. And it's very, very painful apparently. Um, I'm, I'm worried about a lot of things. My mind's just sort of like, and I can't even think right. I'm trying to psych myself up for this appointment, but I don't really know how to. Um, I've ordered some, I've already got some ice packs in my freezer. I've ordered three more ice packs so that I can have Jordan switch them out for me because I am not leaving my bed after this is done. I've asked my mum to, on Monday, to pick up as many painkillers as she can possibly get me. Like, as many painkillers as the pharmacy will allow her to buy. I've asked her to get them. On Monday, we are calling my doctor to see if I can get diazepam, which is, uh, which is a sedative. It's uh, used for anxiety and it's also used for, like, muscle, like... Uh, locked muscles, locked jaw, things like that. It's like it's a muscle relax relaxer as well as like a anti-anxiety thing. Um, I had that while I was in the hospital when I went for my dental appointments. So they weren't as bad, but now that I'm not at the hospital anymore, um, I don't get diazepam anymore. So I'm going to call my doctor and we're going to ask if I can get some as like a one-off for dentist appointments. Um, not for every dentist appointment, just for ones where I'm getting extractions, especially when I go to get my wisdom teeth removed. Uh, that is one of my biggest fears and always has been one of my biggest fears is having my wisdom teeth removed because I've only ever heard that it's horrifically painful, horrifically, horrifically painful, and I will probably be awake for it. I don't want to be awake for it, but I'm not sure that they'll put me to sleep for it either because they only do, um... IV sedation on certain days. So I'm really scared. Um, Jordan is going on holiday in June, I think. So April, May, June. So I'm going to try and have most of my dental appointments done before then because if he doesn't take me, I will not go. I will have meltdowns. It's just going to be a mess. Yes, I'm 30 and I have meltdowns. Um, Jordan is a big comfort for me. Um, having him around makes me feel a lot calmer. Like, even, like, he's really quiet. He doesn't say much of much of anything. But just having him around brings my anxiety down. And it doesn't happen with most people. Um, so I'm going to try and have as much done as I can before he goes on holiday. Uh... The problem with that is Jordan has to take days off work to take me to appointments. Um, so I'm going to see if I can get as much done as possible before he leaves. Um, I'm hoping that I'll be able to finish my mouth by that time. Because the sooner it's done the better and I'd rather like he can just come home and relax and not have to think oh and I've got to take her to the dentist in a week. I've got to take her to the dentist the week after and I've got to take her to the dentist the week after that and I've only just got home from holiday. Like this is like a fancy holiday like a resort and all that stuff like he's gone all out for his holiday and he really deserves it. I wish I could go with him but it's a boy's thing. Mm. As if I'm not a boy. Sexist. <laughs> um... But I really need him there with me. And 
I don't want to like like I want him to be able to come home from holiday and just be able to relax and go back to his work and just do him and not have to worry about me and appointments and my teeth and what state I'm going to be in what condition I'm going to be in am I okay and like he doesn't he doesn't say it but um he does he worries about certain things and certain things kind of get to him um like my living situation and the rest of it like I know stuff like that kind of gets to him a little bit naturally as it would for like anyone you care about these things would kind of affect the person that cares about you too um I just I just hope I can get my teeth fixed before before he goes although like I don't know maybe for like lesser work that's less intrusive and stuff I could maybe go by myself um and maybe have my teeth nice for when he got back it's like a surprise that would be quite nice but I'd like to get them done as like as soon as possible and so that it's all just out the way and done and we can both get on with our lives and doing what we want to do and what we need to do um but yeah I'm gonna leave this here because I'm getting in my own head about all this stuff and I just need to kind of decompress a little bit so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna love you and I'm gonna leave you and I'll say goodbye now so bye remember I love you and God loves you and you are doing amazing I'll see you all soon bye